Good morning, or afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. It's been a while, so I thought I'd do a tank by tank update just to show you what's going on at Garage Aquatics World Headquarters. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah, so in my defense, my wife just went out of town for the weekend. So here I am left unsupervised, so it seems like a good idea. So we'll do this. Let's do the last one first. This one is a 40 breeder. Uh, it's the, and I, I actually bought this one at Petco. Uh, I, I had one online that I was trying to get on offer up. And this guy just was total flake, you know. He, three weeks later, he got back to one of my queries about, yeah, it's still available. And then, so when can, and never got back on that. So I figured I'm just going to go buy one. The nice thing about the store bought, they come with a guarantee. So this tank, uh, I recently set up and I've got this whole video I got to put together on, on the how I built the base how I fixed this bench that it sits under recently I did a, uh, a video on these Amazon swords how they came out of this tank that we'll get to in a minute and how I potted them all uh, yesterday I put uh, four quarries from another tank in here uh, Two seemed to be missing, so I lost, maybe even more. I forgot how many were in there originally. Uh, there were two that had the fins were looking pretty bad, so they were in with Crebensis, and I don't know if the Crebensis were picking on them. They're still really small, so I'm thinking they just weren't getting enough food. Uh, so anyway, uh, this tank, uh, I was originally going to scape it, or, or at least put, you know, substrate, uh, fluval stratum and sand, uh, and plant all these Amazon swords. Uh, and plant crypts and make it kind of a farm tank put some fish in to keep the mosquito population at bay because we'll get them and uh, instead I just left it bare bottom and I put uh, about a dozen little fancy guppies in here for the mosquitoes and I also put some blue dream shrimp in here and one just went by he's in the guppy grass right there and I've also been uh, uh, selling guppy grass online on eBay, so and I, I pretty much ran out, so I'm using this it, one of the several tanks I have with guppy grass growing. Um, and I dropped some sticks in here. I dropped a bunch of uh, ram's horn snails that I've been growing out also for eBay. Uh, no interest whatsoever, so I think I'm going to get rid of them all, slowly clean them out of here, and, and uh, just start that over. This piece of wood with the uh, there we go, the uh, piece of manzanita with Busa Philander on it. It's been another tank and it was buried under a layer of uh, dwarf water lettuce. Um, so it wasn't getting a lot of light. So I thought I would move that into this tank also. Uh, the Blue Dream Shrimp helped cleaned it up or they helped clean it up once upon a time. Uh, it was covered with algae uh, and now it's, it's pretty spotless. Um, so there's I think about six blue dream shrimp and i also dumped in uh, 11 auto sinkless about a week week and a half ago now um it's kind of a quarantine tank for them and eventually i will space them out into other tanks one of my favorite fish but anyway that's this 40 breeder um i don't know if eventually maybe i will take this apart uh take all these apart and just plant the tank and make make a real jungle out of it I've got a bunch of, speaking of jungle, jungle val in the tank that this uh, Amazon sort came out. So I could put a bunch of that in the sand substrate too and try and get that propagated for sale. So, you know, selling plants uh, for me has been helping to pay the, uh, the food bill for these guys. So let's do the next tank. I'm just going to go straight up here. Uh, another 40 breeder. And this one's gone through some transition over time. There's these cool little uh, sailfin quarries that are really pretty. And they, they're put on size. And I got them the same time as I got those little uh, green quarries down below uh, that aren't put on size. Uh, these uh, sword tails all came from another tank, ended up in this tank. This tank was originally bronze quarries and uh, uh, emperor tetras. And there's a couple big plecosauruses floating around in here. Um, and I think I had some crebenses. There they are, up, up in the weeds, feeding on the jungle val underneath it. 
And uh, so anyway, I moved the, moved the sword tails in here. Uh, the jungle valves started in the next tank that we'll do uh, back in uh, early April last year, 2023. And they weren't doing well at all, so I moved them into this tank. And I guess what I realized after moving them into this tank, they just needed a long time to establish it. I just put up another video on uh, uh, the Jungle Val and what they look like when I bought them, and also uh, how long it took for them to establish and how I planted them. Um, so anyway, they're doing really well now. They're, there's some right in front there of that log. They've uh, sent stolons underneath the log. Uh, there's some coming down the side of the tank there. Um, so they're doing really well. And these these uh, couple big uh, Amazon swords uh, had sent out a bunch of uh, runners with pups. And back down below, that's where all these came from. Check out that video. Uh, and then also I've got some uh, uh, Window Love Java Fern. One's glued to a rock there, and then there's some others stuck in uh, some notches on these uh, pieces of driftwood. And then there's a regular um, Java Fern, the narrow leaf, I guess, and a bunch of crypts in the corner here. So anyway, this, the uh, sword tail's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, I started with six, six adults. Uh, I think I've got five still the original adults. I lost one. It's been six, eight months ago or more. And uh, they spawned. And the entire spawn came out male. Uh, now I'm seeing new fry. Lots of them. You're probably seeing them too. Uh, a couple different sizes. Up over that log there, if we can get past the glare, there is a real tiny little one. So they're still spawning. There's the, the smallest hangout on the surface in the jungle valve, along with the shrimp. There they are. And as they, there's another one over here in the glare. Yeah, yeah the glare sucks, doesn't it? Well, anyway, as uh, as they, they get bigger, they get braver, and they start hanging out with the adults. Because they're the big kids now. Okay. Uh, I love the crips. They just, they do so well. So anyway, oh, and there's a bunch of auto sinkless in here too. Can't forget those. And then in this tank, another 40 breeder. Now this tank backspace, uh, I bought on offer up and I think I paid 35 bucks for this one. Uh, this tank also offer up 30 bucks. So not a bad price for 40 breeders. Um, and this is one of the tanks I'm growing out. Guppy grass for sale. Uh, also full of red cherry shrimp. Bob and Carol live in this tank, my albino crebensis. And then I've got some java fern. There's a bunch of Sagittarius subulata. There are some crypts in here. Uh, and there's a different, a kind of a red leaf Amazon sword, and I can't remember what it's called exactly. Um, and if I remember, I, uh, I'll put it up in the video. And I got an Anubius that had was growing on a rock. Part of it rotted off. Uh, it's actually, you know, they'll root around the rock and it was rooted down into the substrate. So I don't know how happy it is. There's some auto sinkless right there. There's at least three in this tank. And there are false truly quarries in here. And there's one back behind the auto sinkless right there. Uh, they're pretty good size. I think I started with five and I found four more in another tank. Uh, once upon a time, there was different floating plants in here and I pulled a bunch out and put them in another tank. Next thing I know, I got these four little false chili quarries floating around. Um, there's one close to the glass there. I really like those, a neat fish. And then uh, there's Bob, albino crebensis, and Carol, uh, his mate. And they have spawned like six times and, and only have managed to keep one spawn alive. And that was their first spawn. And then there's also some uh, ember tetras in here, really pretty little fish. Uh, started out with 10, got, had an ick outbreak, and then, I don't know, over time, but I, I think there's four left. So I'm gonna go get another, I don't know, another eight or 10. They make a great dither fish, and they're just really pretty to look at. But then if we go under the workbench again, next to that first 40 breeder, um, 
I've got these two, I think they're 41 quart uh, plastic trays. And in this one, unfortunately, a load of bladder snails. And uh, some, and I gotta get rid of this, I hate duckweed. There's some duckweed growing in here amongst the dwarf water lettuce. Um, and there's also a piece or two, I thought I saw, yeah, of something called Rickia water spangles right here. That one right there. Um, and then there's, I've been throwing pieces of Java fern in here. And, you know, they, they grow. And then I've got these pots. I bought this uh, stuff called Blix, Blixa japonica. Uh, this is the second batch I bought, also melted off. Having a really hard time getting some of that to survive. Uh, there's uh, uh, one of the African ferns of Bulbitis hiding on a rock here with shrimp in it. There we go. And uh, and then I got a bunch of that nasty green hair algae I got to clean out of here. And I did a video on this tray where I was getting a lot of these red detritus worms. I think they're a, a midge. Uh, and uh, I harvested a bunch out and fed them to my juvenile bettas, and they loved them. And I've got a juvenile betta in here. Here, here he comes. Uh, he was he was at a 29 gallon. That's really a deep tank. And, and he was having a hard time breaching it. And, you know, he may be a she here. I'm not so certain. Um, and so I put it in this shallower body of water so it can breach easier. Um, there we go. Pretty fish. Anyway, so I'll use this for a, a, and a guppy right there. And that guppy hopped out of this because that's the only way I can figure it got there. I didn't put it there. Uh, and in this one, uh, red root floaters, duckweed. Um, and I was growing these uh, spider plants, these non-variegated green spider plants, just completely submerged. Put them in the baskets, put a little gravel in the basket, hold them down under. And it was an experiment. It's not happening. Uh, lots of algae, lots of uh, that green hair algae, that nasty, nasty, this stuff. Really hate this stuff. It's like green steel wool. And here's an interesting sidebar. I don't know if you can see all this stuff here floating off. Those are uh, the cysts off of, you know, hatch your own uh, frozen brine shrimps. That's the brine shrimp direct that does that. A lot of crap in their, in their, uh, uh, in their eggs. They're cheaper and well, that's why. So yeah, I got to pull all this out and just toss it because it's not great stuff. So into the, into the compost pile, actually, I just throw that in the yard, uh, you know, and it breaks down. I threw some rocks in here and I was, you know, and I put the guppies in here uh, and there's a shrimp. I don't remember putting shrimp in there, but that doesn't mean I didn't. Um, and then the bladder snails. Yeah. So anyway, put some rocks in there. I was going to try and use these for maybe tetra, do some tetra spawning and I may still. Um, I just got to find some cool tetras that I like uh, that, that are are you know going to be a, a, a possibility to do this and i got these two little five and a half gallon tanks both kind of experimental this one i was trying to uh, uh raise a mono shrimp so it's it's a salt water um i put the the female in here let her drop her eggs pulled her out and then added you know started raising the salinity and you know nothing really happened i saw the i think they're called zoes you know after they re first hatch out and I swear I saw one that looked like a little tiny shrimp a while back, and I, I haven't seen it since. Um, I did the same thing in this tank, and when I saw the little zoes, I siphoned them out and put them in this jar that's already salted in that I've got adult brine shrimp in here. This jar is a year old now. And so maybe at some point uh, we'll see uh, a mono shrimp that have hit the point where they're maturing and need to be removed from the salt water into the fresh. This tank now, what I've been using, every time I clean uh, my kitchen filter or a couple different hang on back filters I have, they uh, they fill up with little tiny shrimp. They either get through the, uh, the pre-filter, because I'm using a coarser pre-filter, or they just go around it. Um, and they end up in, in the filter media. Uh, 
with all that brown water, that nasty brown water. So I just pour the whole thing in here. Uh, the shrimp settle out. The brown water uh, eventually gets cleaned out by this little hang on back filter. Uh, and there's some shrimp down in here. Uh, and eventually I'll just figure out what they are. I've got orange and red in here, so I'll be able to sort them out. And they're way too young to, to reproduce yet, so I'm not worried about any lines crossing. There's one hanging on, uh, um, let's get my finger in there, right there on the guppy grass right below this pre-filter. I guess we can start at the top of this rack and work our way down. So this is that 29 gallon where that one bed came from. Uh, that the one that was having a hard time breaching. Um, and this tank, I've got a bunch of little bronze quarries back in there. There's a bunch. There's another one. There's 25 or so. And then all these bettas. Now, I had this gorgeous blue betta in here, uh, male, and it disappeared completely. I don't know where it went. I never found a body floating around in it. Uh, there's a couple little mono shrimp, but you know, you'd still see typically the bones because uh, it was only over a couple day period we went out of town. Um, I, uh, um, I looked around. Uh, I had a betta jump out of this tank into this little five and a half with the guppies. And I also had a betta jump out of this tank with the other 29 in the back back there. Uh, and that's full of guppies. And... Uh, so, but it's not in any of those tanks. The only thing I figure is it's this one. And it changed colors. And I'll, I'll clip in uh, the little video I got of, of it. Uh, and maybe maybe this is it. I don't know if they, they can actually change colors like that pretty quickly. And, and it looks like it's starting to darken back up again. I don't know, not a clue. But I'm starting to have some problems in this tank. I've had problems in this tank. I had blackbeard algae. Uh, I've tried to clean that up and I still get remnants of it down here. And I try and vacuum out as much as I can. That like, it's like a black mulm that it creates. Um, and then now I'm starting to see what looks like uh, cyanobacteria uh, across the top of this sand here, back out so we can focus. And there's a couple different kinds of cribs here. And I don't remember what they are offhand. I bought these from uh, uh, Terra's Fish Tanks, I think is her channel. Um, this this big one here, this will get huge. I love it too. Um, and that's another one. Uh, where are we? That's another one here of this one. I've got a couple lilies. There's this one in here. The one here, you can see a new leaf maybe. See it starting to form. All the big, it was huge. Uh, all the other leaves fell off. Bunch of crypts, anything I can do to uh, absorb uh, some of the, I don't know, the nitrates aren't high enough to, to, you know, I don't know, just don't know. And another one of the bulbitis there. And then I'm floating some hornwort in here because uh, it helps absorb some of the, I guess the whatever the, I'll see it turning black. So it's picking up whatever's in the water. Um, and then uh, another one of those red leaf swords I put in a little pot there just for fun. And baby group. That was a Christmas present from one of my granddaughters in Texas. Laddie, because this is the tank the platties used to, oh, I thought they were platties. The sword tails were in. Uh, so she, I, I told her they were platties and she said, we'll name it Laddie. So that's Groot's little baby bird friend. And then I've got uh, one of these fry trays from uh, Lowell's, what do you call it? Lowell's Fish Lab, Lowell's Plant Lab, or, or um, I think it's Lowell's Fish Lab. Um, and you can find his, uh, him on, on uh, YouTube, and if you go to his YouTube channel, you'll find his Etsy link to where he sells these. They're really nice, they're 3D printed. And in here, there's one, there are two little albino quarries, and with some swasatang, and a little piece of hornwort, and I put, uh, I think one or two uh, uh, ram's horn snails in here, now they're everywhere, the little bitty ones. So when I clean it out, I will get rid of all those. And then, so anyway, next to this tank, I've got this five and a half gallon, and I just put a bunch of, well, actually I took two out of the tank around the back here of the fancy guppies. I took two that I thought might make some pretty babies, and we'll see. There, there's loads of little fish in here. Uh, there's the two adults, that's the original female, and the original male at the top here. 
and then just a bunch. And I also threw some uh, orange sunkish shrimp in here, just maybe kind of a little cleanup crew, and floated some guppy grass because they're guppies, that made sense. All right, and then this is uh, my 20, another 29 gallon Crebensis tank. And these are all the uh, Crebensis, and it starts with a P because uh, I cannot remember what the species is. Uh, but these are this, uh, the offspring of Bob and Carol, the albinos that you met in the other tank. And here's a couple more uh, crips that I got from Tara. Um, different, different crips. Um, and so I, these, are, these are ready for sale. I've got I've to thin this batch out. Uh, and they're going, no, we like it here. But they're really pretty fish. Uh, the iridescence on these things can be absolutely spectacular. And about a week ago, the top of this tank was covered with uh, dwarf water lettuce. So much so, it was pushing itself down. Uh, so I just cleared the whole thing out. It's full of duckweed too. Uh, and there's a little piece of duckweed back there. And I've got a little bit of salvinia in here. So I'm gonna be really more uh, proactive about reducing the amount of top cover. Uh, it just got really dark in here. So anyway, I floated a little bit of hornwort just to help you know clean up the tank. Cause I, this is not a planted tank, obviously. Uh, and I really, yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this. You know, I really could, I've got some philodendron, I'm sorry, some pothos, you know, rooting into these tanks. That helps with uh, the nitrate, nitrate levels. There's some roots of the pothos there coming up from down there. And there's another one back here, pothos roots. Let's come around to the side here and you can see. So they help, you know, they help feed on uh, uh, everything that shouldn't be in there. And here you can see how this hornwort, if you can see it in the way this is, let me move it completely. We'll put it over here. See how it picks up all the crud. So when I when I see it doing that, and, and in fact, it looks like there's cyanobacteria on that. Um, and I think I've got some on the side of this uh, fry tray. So I need to clean this out. And what I'll do with that fry tray uh, after I get the fish out, I'll put it in the. I've got a, we've got a little service sink in the laundry room. I'll put it in there and I will spray it with uh, household that bleach spray. That, you know, the Clorox or whatever brand it is, this stuff used, you know, for kitchen counters. I let it sit on that for a bit and rinse it off and it comes off clean because it has before. It leaves a little bit of a stain, but it's, you know, kind of hard to uh, get rid of stain and all. But at least it, you know, it, I don't know if it killed it off completely last time or if it uh, uh, just uh, left some still embedded. And that's why it was able to come back. But this time maybe I will let it sit a little longer with the bleach on it and see if that does it. But it didn't hurt the tray. The one thing he says about the trays, do not use hot water because they are 3D printed and they can soften if you use really hot water. So keep that in mind if you get one of these. Um, let's go down here. Lower level. This is a 20 gallon. I just keep throwing bits of uh, Java fern in here too. Um, and there's a uh, uh, yeah, I think there's, uh, yeah, I don't know. I was going to say some other job for, there might be a little bit of hydrocotyl Japan floating around in here still. It was doing really well in another tank and I pulled out way too much. Now it's not doing well anywhere, which is a bummer because I really like it. Um, I had eight adult, um, Mickey Mouse platies in this tank and one passed. And I, uh, uh, and that they started spawning like crazy. Obviously, here's the results. And then I've got some little bronze quarries in this tank. There's two, and I've also got a whole bunch of orange sunkissed shrimp down on the bottom there, and on the side, uh, and on this side. So what I do when I clean this tank because of where it sits on the end of the rack, I clean the two ends in the one side and leave the back side full of algae because the shrimp love feeding on that. Um, and then I got some guppy grass floating in here too. Um, and then in this tank, I've got these really cool little uh, wild type mollies. And I think I just did a video on that not too long ago. Uh, you might want to check that out. Um, I pretty much cleared this tank out. There's some guppy grass in here. It was covered with guppy grass down about this far. And I've been selling it, like I said. 
uh, and it's pretty much cleared out, so I'm letting it repopulate. And what I did, this used to be a farm tank. I had a bunch of little two-inch terracotta pots with crypts in this tank. And, I, and this is the tank those four little um, false Julie Corys showed up in, and they ended up back in Bob and Carol's tank. Um, so I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to uh, uh, put a rock pile in there because I figured, you know, they hadn't been spawning with all the, there's the little male, he's really pretty. They had been spawning with all that guppy grass. So I thought, well, we'll put a rock pile and see if they drop uh, uh, drop fry. Their live bears drop fry over the rock pile. And so far, nothing. <laughs> one day, there's five of them in here. There's four females in the male. And maybe one day I'll get a spawn out of them. They're really pretty fish. These were given to, be, to me by a Mexicali fish keeper. Uh, and he got them, as I understand, out of the Colorado River uh, near Yuma, Arizona area that he lives pretty fish all right so this is oh let me backspace real quick here uh, this tank here there's red cherry shrimp in here and because of where it's situated in the middle of the rack I clean both ends and there's some algae that needs to be scraped off or rubbed off on the other end and it gets it uh, but I leave the sides uh, again shrimp love feeding in that and I've got bladder snails and I've been trying to reduce those I come in here with my shrimp net uh, and uh, just kind of net them off the sides, net them off the glass and and either throw them out in the yard or wash them down the drain because they have, they're just a serious invasive pest. And I know people say, well, you're overfeeding and you know what I'm not. They just over multiply. They just can't help themselves. I think they have rabbit genes. I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, so this tank next to... Uh, the wild type molly has uh, uh, these uh, red tuxedo guppies and a boatload of blue dream shrimp. And there's seven or eight uh, pandacories in here. And there's one right there, right dead center. And a couple big plecosauruses. Now this tank went cloudy on me again after, I mean, I had done it about six months ago, cleared right up on its own. And I did a video on that. I've got to put it up still. Uh, Patty's Aquatics did a great video on cloudy tanks. And, and there's, oh yeah, okay, cool. There's little little guppies, little fry in here that are starting to show color. Um, but anyway, Patty's Aquatics did a good, a good video on, uh, um, give me a minute, I know this one, on cloudy tanks and what to do, what not to do. And my video is only to corroborate that because he's spot on absolutely spot on uh so this tank there's a bunch of java fern back there now, all these java fern these small java fern i'm showing you have all come off of a couple bigger ones that i bought when i first got back into fish keeping uh january before last january 23 uh and it spreads like crazy and this tank's got a little bit of guppy grass in it this tank was also down to here with guppy grass and it's mostly all gone so i'm trying to repropagate or repopulate the tanks with guppy grass so I can put them back up on eBay. Uh, pays for fish food. And I will also be putting up the Blue Dream Shrimp uh, on eBay. They're pretty. And once in a while, a really will show up. A, um, a blue really, which is blue at both ends and clear in the middle. Uh, so anyway, that's the tank with the uh, tuxedo guppies and the Blue Dream Shrimp. Uh, and also bladder snails, less and less because I've been working hard to get rid of them all. And then next to it, I've got these uh, gold guppies, and I'll be damned if I remember what variety they're called. I got them at a uh, uh, at a PetSmart. Uh, didn't get the name, and nobody puts names on receipts. It's just a uh, yeah, SKU number. Anyway, uh, and this is where all the orange sunkissed, for the most part, live. There's a bunch of them on the side of the tank. And again, a bunch of uh, bladder snails. And I'll, I'll come through with the, the, my shrimp net, net them all out and pitch them because they come up out of the water. I put this uh, copper tape, it peel and stick off the backside across the top of the tanks. And ideally, it was to keep them from hopping tanks. And I think I just got to it too late. Um, and I learned that in gardening because regular garden snails won't cross copper. So interesting. But anyway, uh, all the Amazon swords, there's a nice one back behind the guppy grass here. Let me see if we can get around and 
There it is back there. And Amazon Sword and Nemo. Right there. And the one in the front, there's another one further back. All came from those two big Amazon Swords in that 40 breeder. And then this tank, uh, there's one of the pots of, of little cribs. Uh, a little piece of plastic stuff from PetSmart, and I glued a couple of uh, uh, Java fern to it. I put uh, red cherry shrimp in here, and there's red cherry shrimp in here, and there's a bunch of uh, hornwort in here, and there's also, it was covered with dwarf water lettuce. And just about a week or so ago, I was watching a Keeping Fish Simple video he did on, uh, um, what do you call them, the... Uh, red cherry shrimp or just cherry shrimp in general and how uh, they do better when they can get some light and this tank's got a few shrimp in it but never a lot and I think it's just because there's some up top and that's probably proof that they need the light they don't like being in a cavern and look at all the orange sun kiss up top in the guppy grass up here um, also close to the light and these are just Home Depot shop LED shop lights so anyway, that's just, uh, and it's got this thick layer of mulm on the bottom from the fallout from the hornwort. So anyway, let's go look at another. So around the back from, that's the juvenile beta tank on the other side. This is another 29 full of fancy guppies. Uh, it's start, and, and they were given to me also by Mexicali Fish Keeper, and he called them mutt guppies. Um, yeah, okay, fancy guppies, mutt guppies, whatever. And there are five peppered quarries in this tank. There's one right there. I know some people call them salt and pepper quarries. Uh, they were sold as peppered, so that's the one I'm running with. And there's some java ferns stuck in the layers of rock. And there's a couple Amazon swords of a different variety. There's one there, one back there. Um, some Sagittarius subulata. There's pothos in the water, completely submerged and doing just fine. And guppy grass, because why? This is a guppy tank. No, but actually because I uh, Again, I want to populate the guppy grass uh, so I can start selling it again. And there's a little bit of uh, red root floater and a couple dwarf water lettuce on this tank. And a bladder snail. Ah. Ah. And then next door, this is the tank full of little cowards. These are, there's about 30 um, albino uh, crebensis juveniles in here. They are the brothers and sisters of the Crebensis on the other side. There's also some autosynclus in here. They are the brothers and sisters of the Crebensis on the other side. Uh, they are the, the the offspring of Bob and Carol and that other 40 breeder I showed you guys. There, there they are. And these guys are just the biggest cowards. Oh well. And I got some crips and I've had problems with this tank and I got to take it apart and put it back together. Um, I've had the nitrates go through the roof in this tank. And it's probably because there's 30 fish in here, 30 plus fish in here. Uh, I had five stir by Cory that just started dropping off one at a time, slowly over, I don't know, a few months. Um, oh, and here's another good example of why I put the hornwort in here, um, because it helps collect all that crud. Let's see if we can cover the light a little bit. Let me pull it forward. You can see how it's it just collects all that crud. So. And there it is. What I'm going to do is hang a hang on back filter. I'll use those temporarily. Uh, stir up a bunch of stuff. Let them filter it out. Works really well. You can see all the mulm in this tank. And, the, and I've tried to clean it all out. And it just keeps coming back. And we're not, I'm not sure. I don't know if it's coming off the wood. Uh, don't know. But we'll sort it out eventually. And then down at the bottom, it's the back side of those, uh, those 520s on the bottom rack. So anyway, I've got a cup of coffee while I'm doing this. I hope you've got one while you're watching this. This is eight and a half gallon tank, well used. Uh, somebody was keeping some sort of reptiles in it. Uh, offer up, uh, you know, it was part of another couple tanks, so it didn't cost a hell of a lot. Um, God, I could probably figure this one was maybe two or three bucks if you get, get rationed the other ones out. There's a bunch of crypts in here. These are the ones that came out of that farm tank that the mollies, those wild type mollies were in. And I've got blue dream shrimp in here. And hopefully they will start making more blue dream shrimp. 
Got this big pot here. This is the first attempt at Blix and Japonica that I uh, tried. They all melted off. Uh, the person shipped them from Wisconsin with a heat pack. How hot's it been this summer over most of the country? They, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they were thinking. So I think I might have one little one there. Um, let's see if I can get my finger in there. And I stuffed a piece of Amazon sword that came off of one of those uh, runners that broke off with no roots. Uh, but the crown was intact, the base. So I just stuck that in there. And hopefully the other Blixa, the roots looked good. So hopefully they'll eventually sprout. They're kind of a grass, so grasses tend to do it. And then I've got a Crypt Parva in the front here. And I've got to clean these all out. They're getting taken over and it looks like I'm seeing cyanobacteria there too. Not a good thing. So anyway, uh, there's no filtration on this tank. Uh, the shrimp have been in here for weeks now and they seem to be doing all right. So I'm going with don't need filtration in this tank. And then once upon a time I saw a video this guy using the plastic salad tubs that you get at the grocery uh, to, to grow plants. And that's what I thought I'd do. And I've got Monte Carlo. I bought a couple tubs of Monte Carlo. Um, and they took a while, but they're starting to grow now. Um, and I'll, so it's just used substrate. And, and I keep it moist and I keep the lid on. I open it once in a while, just a little fresh air in. All right. And so this next tank, another offer up, this is a 75 gallon. And I did a couple videos on this, one on how I built this or set this tank up and how I cut all that rock back there. Um, now in this tank, I've got um, these two uh, Koi Angel, angels. Uh, there are, it's my neighbor's hot rod Mustang. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not. Um, there's seven or eight bronze quarries. Uh, they were originally from that first 40 breeder that the, the sword tails are in. Uh, I also migrated out the Emperor Tetras into this tank. Within a week, they all died. And I don't know why, the, the quarries are fine. The Emperor Tetras just failed immediately. And I have no idea what did that to them change in water i mean it's you know most of this tank was filled with water from the tank they were in uh, as well as other tanks so it was all pretty much already seasoned water so not a clue what happened there um and then there's ram's horn snails they came from somewhere now i got them i'm gonna slowly try and get rid of all them too uh, i've heard people say uh pea puffers uh and, and i could probably conceivably go with them in here I certainly can't in the tank where there's shrimp because they will eat the shrimp and I don't want that. Um, and they'll probably get along with the quarries and, and with the, uh, the angelfish. Um, there's also, I put in about, God, I can't remember, 11 or 12 uh, clown plecos. I can't remember the last time I saw them. I know they're elusive, but still. Uh, and then I also put in uh, two, the last two out of a project I was working on. Uh, hillstream loaches, uh, the reticulated hillstream loaches that just failed miserably. Uh, so I finally just put them in this tank and I saw one after a while, not long after I put them in. I haven't seen those in a while. And I did find a skull right down, let's see, get my finger right there in front. Um, and I don't know if it was one of the clown plecos or one of the hillstream loaches. Now, those two big plecosauruses that are in with uh, the uh, red tuxedo guppies, I'm going to put in this tank as soon as I can catch them um, because I think they might be part of the problem. That tank's been, you know, running high on nitrates. And so, but the ammonia and uh, 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 nitrites are fine, but phosphates and nitrates are, are really high. So I'm not sure if it's from their poop or what, or just their, you know, bigger fish. So we're going to get them out. Plus there's all the shrimp, plus there's all the guppies in there. Plus there's the little, uh, 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 little pandacories in there. So anyway, this tank's loads, loads plants. I tucked a bunch of java fern. Been having problems with that. Did a couple videos on that. Found out potassium uh, is probably the issue. So I'm starting to fertilize with potassium as well, extra potassium. So hopefully try and turn around this uh, leaf spotting. And then I've got a, a beautiful big, I think it's a tiger lily. 
Uh, somebody correct me. Uh, there's a little Amazon sword tucked under there. Sagittarius subulata, a little pink flamingo crit. Um, and uh, uh, another type of an Amazon sword, another type of an Amazon sword. Uh, there's the regular kind of doors, and I can't remember what the species is, the green, the big green Amazon sword there. Bunch of crypts in the back. Uh, more Sagittarius around this rock. Something called a Pontogeton. Undul und is it undulata? No, I don't remember if it's undulata, but anyway, that's a bulb, that's a beautiful plant. Another uh, crypt flamingo. Uh, there's another little crypt flamingo that's just taking its time right behind there. Uh, and then a bunch of bronze, uh, crypt, crypt wendii bronze, or red, or no, I don't think they call it red, maybe brown. Um, they're doing really well. Uh, I really like crypts. Probably said that, I'll say it again, I really like crypts. And then there's a chunk of, there's a piece of crypt, not a piece of crypt, there's a crypt back there. And the Sagittarius running back in the shade underneath the, the lily in the crypt. And I might move some of that out. And this tank's been running, I don't remember, I'd have to look, but it's been running several months now. And there's some of the ram's horns. Another one on the branch there. These are chunks of manzanita that came out of my mother-in-law's yard. I did a little pruning for her and got those out. So anyway, that's this, and it's got a, um, pothos I tucked around behind the big rocks there and a little philodendron over there this kind of helps with water clarity water control water parameter control uh, and there were some little blue dream shrimp in here and I saw one of these two knuckleheads chasing one once so if there were any they may have cleared them out there's plenty of hiding uh, these guys are plenty fast so are shrimp so I, I don't know this is not you know, the tank for shrimp, obviously, with angelfish in it. So we won't be adding more to it. If there's still shrimp in here, if they start multiplying, yay. Otherwise, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Here's the tank where it all started. This is my kitchen tank. Um, it's a 16-gallon rimless water box. And I've got a couple big pieces of Siri stone in here. And a chunk of Mopani wood and java fern. And this is the two java ferns. I had one here and one on this side and you can see how it runs down that log and you can see how it runs around the rock um these are the original java fern that i started with and they've just made more um but i've got that leaf spot going on in here uh you can see it back there so as leaves die i, I pull them out but i'm not going to bother to try and prune it all that way too much work uh same thing with the Zenubius. uh Got a couple of Nubius. There's one there and another one here. And I think they like a little more light than people give them credit for. Um, there's neon tetras in here. There were 21 and now there are 17. I've had four jumpers. And there's uh, six albino quarries in here. They spawned once, they spawned on the glass uh, right here and uh, they spawn on the other side on the internal filter. Um, and those are the two albino quarry that survived uh, my mess up in uh, that fry tray out in the garage. Let's go around the other side. I always like end views of a tank. They're just something, it's just kind of a different look. You get a lot of depth that you don't get otherwise, unless you got huge tanks. So I've got, a, uh, I had a couple Amazon swords in here. There's one. There was another one right here in front of this chunk of wood that I took out. Way too much plant for this tank. I've really got to pull this one out. And there's another uh, Anubius here. And I feel like it's called Congoensis. Uh, I like that longer, slender leaf. It's really pretty. Uh, one of these days I will get the Coffifolia as well because that's another one I'd like to get. Uh, there was a, a Bulbitis here on a rock. And it was doing really well. Uh, and then it just fell apart. And uh, I may still have pieces of it somewhere. Um, I'll have to go look because I don't remember if I really do or not. They might be in the tank with uh, all the uh, baby uh, Mickey Mouse platies. This is Vanellope von Schwitz. She is adorable. Uh, all those juvenile bettas are her offspring. Uh, the male passed uh, actually within a month after they spawned. Um, problems just never recovered. Uh, there's some Christmas moss. 
Lots of red cherry shrimp in here. Uh, another Anubius hiding back here. Uh, I was doing water changes on this tank daily, um, trying to get the, the quarries to breed again or to spawn again. And I realized that I was raising the water temperature instead of lowering it. Because what's coming out of the tap right now, uh, and here we are, you know, mid, mid to late August, is 80 degrees, so there's no way, you know. So I was putting a gallon of water in the fridge. I dropped the water down to about here. Uh, the ambient temperature in the room with the air conditioning on is, is about 74, 75. Um, so the, the water temperature about 74, 75, because I, I turned the heater off. Um, once summer started and the AC came on, I figured we're just fighting an uphill battle. Everybody's doing fine. Um, and then I'd pour that gallon jug of refrigerated water in here and it would drop the temperature down pretty well. And I would leave the water here for about an hour or so. And in the meantime, I would grab a couple blocks of uh, frozen blood worms and, you know, kind of run them between my fingers to break up the blocks. Um, feed the quarries, kind of ideally, you know, fatten them up, prep them for, for spawning again. Everybody ate real well, the neons, uh, uh, Vanellope and the quarries, but they still haven't spawned. So I'm just gonna hold off for a while and we'll pick it up again later. Um, there are also three clown plecos in here. Occasionally I will see them. And there are also three autosynclus in this tank. They're really cool little fish. I really like autosynclus. I'd love to be able to spawn those. I think that'd be great. I don't know, they got a, got this thing for small catfish. They're pretty cool little fish. And then just for fun, this is a gallon jug I set up almost the same time I set this tank up. And then, let me let me add this tank. I set up uh, January, 2023, right after we moved into this house uh, towards the end of December, 2023. I'm sorry, 2022. Um, and so I, I had two of these jugs. Uh, one day I come come out with the other jug. It's got water all around the base. The bottom split out. They're old, but I'd never seen that happen. The bottom just split out. It'd been sitting there static. But what are you gonna do? So I've got some uh, 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 anthurium uh, rooting in here. Uh, that's the one with the big heart-shaped waxy flower. Uh, there's a, I don't know if it's marble queen or whatever. It's one of the pothos. And there's a little philodendron in the back here too. And uh, so there's a substrate down there, there's a couple of rocks and it all kind of rooted into that. It's doing really well. Um, and I did a video on this stuff and it's these wafers, we get mosquitoes. So they'll come in, they'll lay their eggs in there because it's still water and there's no fish in there. There's shrimp in there. There are some red cherry shrimp in there. Uh, in fact, I, I don't know if you can see that or not. There's one right there. And there's another one over here. Let's see if we can, yeah, there he is. She, it, whatever. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, you, you know, check out that video on uh, using the mosquito wafers to control mosquitoes. Good for ponds, water, you know, water features, outdoor water features. Also good in, indoors. We've got several jars with just water and rooting plants in it and mosquitoes land in there. And next thing you know, there's mosquitoes in the house. This is a 12 inch cube. Uh, it was an amazon.com thing. It's a neat little tank. Needs a cleaning, need a good scraping. Uh, there are some uh, least keely fish that Mexicali fish keeper gave me. Um, and there are some glow light tetras. And there are some pygmy quarries in there somewhere. Um, there's one on that leaf back there. Um, I would love for those to spawn. And then uh, uh, lots of red cherry shrimp and lots of plants. Uh, wind to love java fern, regular java fern. Uh, this crypt, and I planted one crypt right there. And these are all the offshoots of it. And then I planted four of these Sagittarius sebulata and they just spread like crazy. Uh, there's another, it's a, God, I don't remember, some sort of dwarf hair grass. You can kind of see it. And that's always struggled for me. So I don't mess with that if any of it survives. There's some in the, uh, the 16 gallon water box in there uh, along that side view down at the bottom. If you back up, you could probably see it. 
And then there's the Sinubius glued to a rock. Um, and actually the, um, the Java ferns are either stuck to a rock or stuck to a piece of a, a little piece of driftwood. So anyway, it's been kind of a cool tank. Uh, it's, there's a couple different layers of, in the substrate. I think I've got pond soil at the bottom of this. I was using that in the early days. Uh, it works really well. It's a source of nutrients without being a, uh, a lot of organic material that create a lot of algae. Um, so works really well. Oh, there's, I don't know if that was coming in. There's a, um, a little pygmy quarry that was breaching. See the same one that breached twice or two different ones breached one after the other. But that would be fun if they would make a little more pig, more little pygmy quarries. And here's the last tank. This is a 20. Um, and this is where I was trying to do the uh, Hillstream loaches that just did not work. And now I've got, uh, there's five Mickey Mouse platies. They were the ones that were in that 20 gallon in the garage with all the fry. And look what they've done. They've done it again. We'll come around the side here or the end. Um, there's a pot full of crips, bunch of hornwort. Um, there's uh, another bulbitis on a piece of driftwood. Another anubius on a piece of driftwood. Lots of fry in here. And I have to thin out the, the hornwort. And this tank was loaded with bladder snails, and I got rid of most of them. There's one. And, and I'll, I'll just keep plodding along until they're gone. Um, and there are blue dream shrimp in here. And there's one coming across, heading towards, uh, I don't know, kind of the front over that way. So there should be, I don't know, three, four, five blue dream shrimp. I think there were more than that. Um, but anyway, it's just, and this is just a gravel bottom. I slid all the gravel out of the way set that pot on the glass uh, and slid gravel back in around it. Probably should have done it differently, but that's the way it is. And I could always change that. And this would be an easy tank to take apart. Uh, and at some point, I'm going to have to uh, probably take this tank apart, get all the fry out of here, put them in with their brothers and sisters in the other tank. Um, I, don't, I don't know. This is filling up fast. with. <laughs> so I've got the adults. Uh, there were two different ones. This one had this kind of sunburst color uh, on, and the others were all orange. You can see them side by side. That's a great, great way to compare the two. And it seems like most of the fry are coming out like, like this one here. We'll see. As they mature, we will see. All right, well, that's sort of it in a really big nutshell. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy it, and if I didn't, I probably wouldn't have. I think I got 19 tanks up and running. Um, multiple tank syndrome. Yeah, not all of us have that, do we? Um, but anyway, it's likely to grow. Uh, my wife's been pretty, um, pretty patient, uh, pretty forgiving with all this. I was watching. Uh, I think it's Mex Cali Fish Keeper doing a, a redo in his garage, and looking around in here and I know where I could add another rack uh, with 20 gallons endwise on it. Um, there's a couple things I'd really like to do. I'd really like to add to uh, uh, more shrimp, uh, breeding shrimp, selling shrimp, uh, more plants, breeding plants, well not so much breeding plants, propagating plants, and, and selling plants. Um, and take it that way. And then I've got, obviously got some fish that I can uh, find homes for. Uh, I've got these sword tails behind me or they're going to start needing homes. I've got the juvenile bettas I'm going to have to start finding homes for. They're almost a year old. Um, and the Crebensis juveniles that I showed you. And they are a little over a year old. Um, and then all the guppies, the, the tuxedo guppies and the uh, those uh, yellow guppies. Just have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. So anyway, oh, and, and can't forget all the Mickey Mouse platies I'm going to end up with somehow or another. And it, I, there's a lot I'd still like to do. I'd like to get more angelfish to go in with those koi, more koi angelfish to go in that 75-gallon tank. There's always something. Uh, I'd really like to expand the number of quarries I have and uh, start 
breeding more quarries. Uh, cool little fish. So all in all, uh, yeah, I'm nuts and I'm having way too much fun with this. And that's part of the deal, isn't it? So anyway, as always, thanks for watching.